reading of the scripture this morning. It comes from <coughs> Psalms 91. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will, says of the Sovereign, God is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely God will save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. God will cover your wings, you with feathers, and under God's wings you will find refuge. God's faithfulness be, will be your shield and your rampart. You will not fear the terror of night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your right side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. If you say, God is my refuge, and you make the most high your dwelling, no harm will overtake you. No disaster will come near your tent, because God will shelter me in God's dwelling during times of trouble. God will hide me in a secret place in God's tent, and God will set me up high and safe upon a rock. May God add a blessing. Oh, yes, all the kids. If you've been here for the last few weeks, you know that I've been talking about God as our rock. And God is our rock. And we talked about our, the, the footsteps that we take. And today, um, I'm going to be talking about God is our shelter. I thought about bringing like a pop tip, but I, I knew we had other things going on today. So um, you can just imagine a tent as your, as your shelter um, for, um, for today. So what does it mean to have shelter? What does it mean? Well, for some, it means having a roof over their head. And for others, it means having a safe place to lay their head. The world we find ourselves in today is filled with turmoil. Our very lives can be threatened, and we don't know truly what tomorrow will hold. Life truly can come tumbling down in an instant. Uh, for me, I take comfort in knowing that I have eternal shelter in God, and that I can take my refuge in God and receive the blessings every single day. For sure, I do not believe in an unjust God, but I believe in God who is my shelter. I believe in God who is my rock and my guide every day. There's a saying that says when the rain falls, it doesn't just fall on the just and the unjust, or it doesn't just fall on the just, it falls on the unjust as well. What that says to me is that every person will have the potential to face a storm in your life. Storms will, are going to come upon you sometimes, like the loss of a job. That's a pretty stormy time. Like the loss of loved ones. Or like being excluded by family and friends because there's some differences. Or like the end of a relationship. Those are some stormy times. And we all need shelter, especially during them, those times. And I want you to let you know that God is a place of shelter for us in times like that. Last week, I talked about seeking God above all else, and when we do that, we are able to find that shelter. There's an old song that my grandmother used to sing called The Rock of Ages. Maybe you know that song. Rock of Ages, cleft for me, let me hide myself in me. Let the water and the blood from thy wounded side which flowed be a 
sin of double care, save from wrath and make me pure. Powerful, powerful rock of ages, cleft for me. Let me hide myself in thee, where I am protected, where, as I believe, where healing can happen in the protection, or at least it can begin in that place. God is truly the rock of ages, and we can take refuge with God. That's the God I take refuge in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. See, Moses took refuge in the cleft of the rock so that when God passed by, Moses would be protected. I've often thought about that passage, and I've, what I understand a little bit, a little bit about that, is that truly God protects us even from the powerful things that are good. Because sometimes, sometimes we don't really know what's good for ourselves. We think we do. We think we do. <laughs> Elijah hid in a cave after calling down false gods and, and then he was running from Queen Jezebel. Sounds like a story out of news. <laughs> and, and then, you know, he took refuge in this cave, in this rock. And he was in there, and, and then all of a sudden, you know, God calls him out. What are you doing in there? What are you doing in there? <coughs> God calls him out. Now, Sometimes we are like Elijah. We also like to run and hide. But see, God knows exactly where you're at <laughs> when you're hiding out. Just saying. <laughs> God knows where you're at. I want to tell you this morning, saints, that hiding out is not the same thing as seeking shelter. <laughs> There's a difference. Hiding out is not the same thing as seeking shelter. You know when you're hiding out. <laughs> and you know when you're seeking shelter. I would suggest to you that you know the difference. There's something to be said about finding shelter in your time of need. If, if you're, like when you're frightened or you're, you're afraid, you can be assured that the blessed rock of ages will be with you. Right. What I've come to understand is that God has a purpose for me. Right. God has a purpose for you. Mm -hmm. God has a purpose for us right. as a community of faith. Yes. See, I know what my purpose is. And, I, and what it is, it's my purpose is to proclaim the love of God and the grace of God to anybody who will listen. <laughs> anybody. <laughs> I know that purpose. It's very clear to me. Your purpose, whatever it is, I want to suggest to you this morning, is just as powerful as mine. Matter of fact, maybe even more so. But it's not powerful if you're not doing it. <laughs> if you're hiding out. It's powerful because, you know what, you stand on the promises of God. Our church's purpose, we say, is to love God and love others. That's right. Very simple. Love God and love others. And hopefully by doing that, we find out that we can be a help in a time of need. That we can share this incredible gift that we have been given called grace and love, and hope. When we serve God and others, we find out 
at least I have, that people are just people. People are just people. Even the homeless that we serve are people. And we find that out. These homeless people, they're not helpless. Matter of fact, some of them are very motivated. Our church has been raised up. We have been raised up, saints. I just don't know how else to tell you how awesome this place is because we've been raised up. We've been raised up as a place of shelter. We've been raised up as a place of refuge. We've been raised up as a light to this community. We are called not only to be a, to, to a place of spiritual shelter for the hurting, but to provide a place for all of you and those yet to come to explore and understand their purpose. We have to understand our purpose first. Love God. Love others. We are called to not only be a spiritual sh shelter for the hurting, but to provide a place for all of you to explore and understand what that is. To explore and understand what that is. Now you, may de you might need to hang out in the crevice of the rock for a bit. I don't know about you, but I know there's been times that I just need to hide out in the crevice of the rock. But once you do hide out for a bit, you can find that you are encouraged. And then you move beyond the crevice of the rock and you put your, your life into action. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. You come out of hiding, if you will. Yeah. Yes. Now, some of you haven't figured that out just yet because you're still hiding. Not from me. Well, maybe you are hiding from me. Because some of you, are, you know, I, I, I'll tell you exactly what I think. <laughs> and I try to do it with love. But there's some of us that need to quit hiding out in the shelter, in the crevice. Because there's more to do, you okay. see. So as a community, I believe, and part of that, because if we're not hiding out, then we become community. And we, we can do this. As a community, we do provide shelter, spiritual shelter. But you see, that's not all. We provide food for those in need. And when we do that, we're giving shelter. When you give out a backpack, you know we have a backpack ministry? If there's backpacks on the back of the table that you put in the trunk of your car, and when you see a homeless person, you give, give it out, you give that backpack, no questions asked. Or maybe you're not the giving out kind, of kind, but you'd rather give things for the backpack. We'll take that too. That's still serving. Do both. We do both. Or do both, yeah. When you do that, when you give out a backpack or you provide stuff in the backpack, you're providing some shelter for these folks. When you give shoes, now we just got finished with our shoe drive, and we had lot, how many, lots of shoes. Lots of shoes that came from your feet that's going to help someone else shelter their twinkly toes. <laughs> When you give them school supplies, we have some supplies left over here, and they're going to be going out today to those kids in need. When you provide school supplies, you help youth in years to come. Wow. You know what, saints? I celebrate. I celebrate all that we are able to accomplish. Churches that are much bigger than us don't do what we do. That's right. They true. don't. Yeah. They don't. And I'm not bragging. Well, maybe a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I celebrate what we're able to do because we understand that it's not about us having our butts in the seats here this morning. I mean, that's part of it. But it's more than that. It's more than that. 
I celebrate that because some of you have found your shelter here. And you're willing to move from the crevice of the rock, knowing that God is the solid rock upon which you stand. Because I know this. In my own strength, I cannot do it. In your own strength, you cannot do it. But in the strength of God, you can. I can, you can, we can. I also know a place of refuge. That this place is a place that you can come to again and again and again and again without fear, without judgment, without dread. I hope you get as excited as I do when I'm getting ready to come to church because I know I'm going to come and I'm going to see you, but more importantly, I'm going to meet God here. That's right. I do have one big concern. Sometimes I wake up in the middle of the night for our community because many in our community still shun the idea of anything spiritual. I'm concerned about those who have yet to find us, this spiritual shelter. And I'm also concerned for those who still sit in abusive churches. One thing I know, I believe God is greater. God's power is greater. And the power of God for those people to move to come to that place of refuge and safety that is provided here, there's still hope. I believe that God is working on us to be that light as we continue to come out of our hiding places and share the reality of the unlimited possibilities of God. I believe God will lift us up on the wings of eagles and give us protection the protection we need to soar higher than ever we've ever dreamed of. I believe it. I believe that we're poised on the precipice, that we're right here and we're about ready to fly. Amen. Maybe it's like the little mother eagle who keeps them out <laughs> of the nest. And they're... <laughs> we might have to do that for a little bit. But you know what's going to happen? We're going to soar. Amen. We're going to fly. That's right. Because God never fails. God never fails. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. Let us soar this morning, saints. Amen? Amen. Amen. Amen.